these dogs to be imported into the UK. Daniela Dos Santos, good to talk to you. Thank you very much for spending a bit of time with us this morning. 6.43, mm. it's going to be, I think, hopefully a sunshiny day. We can have you, a little... You've tried to summon it with yeah, your yeah, I have. Family. Look, look, and it's <laughs> as if by magic, brought on by my yellow suit, wonderful sunshine um, out. That's the view from just outside is, our is studio, that Media City. You, you'd seen Carol's uh, forecast yesterday? Sometimes or? it's just a sunshiny day, isn't it? Today right. is one of those. I, I've decided. I'm not sure, Carol, it's going to be sunshiny for everybody <laughs> at all points, though, is it? Morning. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> but for many of us, it is. Good morning, everybody. A close eye on for you, Dan and Lou. Thank you very much, Carol. We know you will. Thank you. There's sunshine out there, though, isn't there? Um, it's 6.47, it's Tuesday morning, and for people living in some of the country's most remote places... The 50s could be returning to Blackpool's promenade once again. Good morning. Today across Scotland and Northern Ireland, it's going to be cloudier, breezier, with some patchy rain for England and Wales, some hazy sunshine and warm. I'll have all the details coming up. So the time is six minutes past seven. Uh, we're going to go and speak to Carol in a moment, but uh, we've got some lovely pictures coming our way from Blackpool this morning. You might recognise the famous tower. Uh, which gives you a, an idea of what uh, the weather in that part of the world, what people are waking up to this yeah, morning. Yeah, and we're talking about deck chairs going back to Blackpool as well, which would be perfect for today. Um, Carol um, is going to tell us about the weather there. For everybody else, there's some sunshine around, isn't there? Morning. That's right. Good morning, everybody. There's some sunshine, but equally, there's some low cloud mist and fog as well, as you say. And it's only going to get more humid as we go through the next few days and nights as well, Dan and Lou. OK, thank you very much. Thanks, Carol. Pleasure. Uh, people aged between 25 and 29 in programme this morning. Uh, not least, we're going to be live in Portugal because yes. if it's gone on to the Ambulis, we're also going to be live at Gatwick as well to see so, so many travellers trying to get back in time before 4am this morning. Mm. Of course, not all of them have been able to do that, so that's going to be covered in both Gatwick and Portugal. We mentioned as well that Stephen Graham's going to be on the programme. Lots of you asking when. Eight four. Hello, good morning. Watching Breakfast uh, with Louise and Dan this morning. Uh, let's get you up to date uh, with news this morning. As we've been hearing, new quarantine restrictions have come into force for passengers returning to England from Portugal as the country moves from the green list of travel destinations to amber. Uh, let's speak to our correspondent Jenny Hill, who's in Albafura on the Algarve, where much of the tourism industry relies on visitors from the UK. Uh, Jenny, lovely to speak to you on the programme. What's the picture there this morning? Well, it is another beautiful morning here in Albi Ferry. You can see they're just preparing the beach behind me for the sunshine filled day ahead. Now, in normal times, as you say, these sands would be thronged with tourists as the day went on, and the vast majority of them would be people from Britain. Not anymore. Many of the British tourists who had made it here have now gone home again, desperately scrambling to get flights before that 4 a.m. deadline this morning when Portugal officially went onto the amber list. A lot of those people had thought this was the perfect destination, a safe place for a final getaway after a year of lockdowns. And it's a phrase actually we heard a lot from people um, over the last day or two. We specifically chose Portugal as our holiday destination because it was on the green list. Um, so it's just a bit gutting, really. This times for Portugal's tourism industry. Britain is its biggest market. You do get a sense of disappointment, of despondency even here. In normal times, these beaches, the bars, the restaurants would be thronged with British tourists. People here tell us they're trying to stay optimistic. They're hoping for the best, but they cannot afford another year like 2020. All right, OK. And Mark and Helen, who flew out on Friday, were determined to go ahead with their time in the sun. <laughs> Empty beaches, growing concern. But I hope, too, that the Brits will be back. It is strange to be in a destination like this um, and find the streets last night were deserted. Um, very little noise coming from bars and restaurants, the kind of hubbub you generally expect um, during a summer season. 
in the Algarve. Um, I don't know how much you can see of the, the bar behind me, but the owner there yesterday said normally, in fact, just last week, um, his terrace was full to bursting with tourists, most of them British. Yesterday afternoon, barely anybody was sat there sipping their daiquiris and looking out over the ocean. It's no wonder that the Portuguese authorities have been so enraged by this decision and frustrated too. Um, people here, the business owners, so they're quite baffled by it because when you look at the COVID figures for Britain and for Portugal, it's difficult to make comparisons, of course, because of the way that, that testing is carried out. But actually, if you look at the curves of infection, both have got their case numbers right down after serious waves over the winter. Those curves are starting to gently rise again here in Portugal. But actually, most of those cases are being seen up in the north in places like Lisbon. Here in the Algarve, people are saying our case numbers are low. We don't have a problem. This is not a logical decision on the part of the British government. So you can see how distressing it is for people um, here in a resort which is so dependent on British tourists. Perhaps they can take some small comfort from the fact, though, that there are still some flights coming in from England. Yesterday, as I arrived, I was met at the baggage um, carrier carousel by another flight of people coming in from London. I said to them, are you not worried about the, you know, the incoming quarantine restrictions? And one woman said to me, you know what, I just don't care. After the year I've had, I simply want some sunshine. So there will be some tourists to keep the bars, if not busy, at least perhaps ticking over. Thank you very much for that, Jenny. It does look beautiful. You can there this understand morning, the feeling, yeah. can't you? Exactly. Yeah, frustration for for many people. And we've been at Gatwick Airport this morning as well with Tim Muffet talking about those people who are trying to race back and those who've now arrived today and and face a lot of costs and yeah. jabs and tests and. Uh, self-isolation. Uh, 7.36. Now, Sally's going to be talking to us now about a story that has sort of been rumbling mm. long for quite so much going on um, in the world of sport, isn't Busy. there? Thank you. Yeah, really interested to hear Mark Ramkash's thoughts on that huge story in cricket at the moment oh. as well. Thank you very much for that, Sal. Um, let's catch up with the weather. Carol's got all the things we need to know about, including the picture of the season. Oh, here we go. Do you need a drum roll? <laughs> go on, then. <laughs> oh, oh, hold on. Oh, I, need, I need another pen. It's like a biro oh, roll. Just wait for it, wait for it. <laughs> Wow, that is a really good build-up. Thank you both. <laughs> good morning, everybody. Lou and Dan are absolutely right. It's that time again when we would like you to vote for your Weather Watchers pick of the season. And we're Lou and Dan, I hope you're going to vote. Of course. Yes. Of course, absolutely. I, just, I love it when you say Merck. Just say Merck one more time, Carol. Go on. Merck. Oh, there it is. Thank you very much. How you say it, Dan. Uh, Carol's going to be back at uh, 10 past 8. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it is just coming up to 10 to 8. And, there are... and really, people are coming to seaside again. And do you hope that people do return to, to Blackpool in their numbers this, this summer? Yeah, it, it's already happening. The bank holiday weekend was probably the best I've seen for 20 years. It was absolutely amazing to see the beach full. And, uh, and so it's a real opportunity. And, and hopefully, you know, people will come all the way through the summer and the, the weather will stay great. And finally, what can people do while they're here? Well, you know, that's the other advantage of, of Blackpool is that we've got loads of stuff to do from the Pleasure Beach, the Sea Life Centre, going up the tower, the piers, you know, uh, the zoo. There's all sorts of things people can do. Oh, well, thank you for joining us this morning. Well, I was going to give a bit of a demonstration on how to assemble a deck chair, but it took three of us to get this down onto the beach, so I'll give that a miss. Uh, we'll leave you with this live shot from our drone uh, and see if you can spot us below. Uh, just look for the orange and white stripy BBC Breakfast deck chair. I think we can spot it. Can you? Oh, yeah, look, just, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, on, on the yeah. right-hand side, yeah. Near the clock. Got it. There you go. Thank you very much. Looks lovely. I was going to run up to our little TV there and point it out, but then I realised none of you would be able to see that. <laughs> but I would. Yeah, you could. Yeah, exactly. Stay with just us. Just for you, Louise. <laughs> the headlines are coming up. And ban imports of dogs with cropped ears as part of a new set of measures to ensure animal welfare. Uh, it's fast approaching uh, 10 past... Eight. I was going to say nine then. That would be very late. Ten past eight is the time. Uh, Carol is here looking at the morning's weather for us. Good morning, Carol. What have you got? Good morning, everybody. I've got a bit of everything, actually, for the next few days. Thank you, Carol. Thank um, you. Um, 11 minutes past eight. Uh, many unpaid carers are exhausted. and I'll bring good. Carol in. Oh, Carol. <laughs> Carol. Um, morning, Carol. Um, you got the weather for us, I think. And I did tell Carol about this yesterday, so you did have a bit of warning. Morning. I did, but my gabber is still flaccid, I must say, <laughs> Lou. I'm shocked and you will be so missed and I'm glad you're not going yet. You said not till the end of the summer. So we're going to make the most of you while we have you. Good, thank you. Thank you.
<laughs> oh, good morning, everybody. It's sad news for us this morning. Tell she's quite excited about it. <laughs> we'll see you at 9.50. Yeah. Thank you very much, guys. We look forward to that. Um, oh, by the way, you might want to keep watching for the next few minutes, uh, Getting in Kim, because we have some rather significant breakfast news coming your way. Well, I say we, Louise. I'm just going to take a little bit of a deep breath. Uh, so, everybody, uh, something I just wanted to tell you about. Um, it will be, this year, 20 years mm. since I first presented this programme. And uh, since then, I've felt part of a huge, enormous BBC Breakfast family, which includes everyone who works here, everyone on the team, and every one of you who watches the programme. I've loved being part of it, but there is a but. You know about the but. Mm. Um, I have decided that it is time that I stop setting my alarm for 3.40, sometimes when I'm feeling really <laughs> rebellious, 3.46 in the I'm morning. <laughs> um, and I'm going to be leaving the programme. It's not going to be for a while. Mm. Um, and I just, before anything else, I wanted to thank everybody who's watching for your loyalty and your support over all those years. I have absolutely loved being part of it. Um, I will really miss it. Um, but it is time now to stop that alarm early in the morning. And thank you for watching all over those years as well. You could probably Ooh. appreciate it. I, it's a bit of a relief to, to say that, isn't it? It's big news for Louise. I know that's probably very big news for lots of you who are watching as well. And certainly for everybody who works and loves working with Louise on this programme. Um, obviously, you need to give us a bit of time to get ready to give you the proper big send-off. So, um, when? When are you going? Uh, that's a very good question. It's not, it's not today. Um, it will be sometime after the summer. The date is not mm. set in stone, but yeah, it'll be sometime after the summer. And, I, you know, we've worked together on this sofa to, uh, for five years. You say you've been around for sort of 20 started, years. My first one was yeah. 20 years ago, it's so my incredible. children can't remember a time when I wasn't at some point working on the programme. So so. It's been a huge part of your life, a huge part of your family's life as well. And looking back over those years, I, I know you must, you know, this must all be sort of rolling around your head this morning. There must be so many incredible memories. Lots of different memories, uh, lots of memories, happy memories that I'll take away with me. Um, and also, you know, the, the extraordinary and news stories we've covered over mm. those years as well. And I'll never forget that day that you and I uh, got a text at two o'clock in the morning from our boss then to say that something had happened mm. at the Manchester Arena. And that was, you know, an extraordinary day because... You know, I've, I moved up here with the programme to the North West, feel very much part um, of this whole community. And for something to happen in what feels like our home um, was a really difficult day. And also that huge sense of responsibility to everybody who was watching on that day, uh, because I'm very conscious that we are in your house at a really, you know, a sensitive time. You've got your children getting up, you're going, mm. they're going to school. So we always have to tell you the bad news in the most sensitive way we possibly can. And that day will be something I'll always remember. Well, I, I don't want to upset you today, but I... I'm feeling really OK at the moment, I, Dan, I remember so. that day. Um, it, oh, I think it would always stick in, yeah. in our minds because I, I knew you were good, but that day I saw Aww. you were amazing because I think that is your superpower. You're always able to sort of tell heartbreaking news in a really gentle, careful and kind way. And there are very few people, Louise, who can do that. And that's why you'll be... Know, sorely missed on this program by everybody who works on it and by everybody who watches as well. And um, you know, talking about your memories, there, there almost also must be some things that have made you incredibly proud working on this program. Oh my goodness! I mean, I've had we've had fun times. Yeah, yeah we um, have. We've had fun a lot times. Of fun times. Uh, we've had some incredible guests. Mm. Um, I love you know me. I love hearing people's stories. Yeah. I love being able to them to be able to tell their stories. Um, the last year has been extraordinary. Um, the watching captain, Sir Tom Moore, as he mm. is now, um, all of that story and being here during what have been, a, it's been a really difficult time. Uh, we put the programme out every single day um, and I felt hopefully that we've been able to keep you company at home as well as for keeping you informed. Um, I do remember, of course, that the menopause week. Yes. <laughs> we changed, we had a lot of conversations, didn't Which we, everybody? you weren't sure you wanted to do. To oh my gosh, that, fe that felt a bit like this moment, yeah. actually, sort of jumping <laughs> over the edge of a ferry that I have done um, into cold water. Um, so, you know, that was that was really important to me. And yeah, I just think so, so many memories and, and many of them, you know, just really happy memories. OK. What now? What next? Yeah, <laughs> what I, next? This is what I, I want to know, what, what have we got lined up? Because I know you've got a plan somewhere. <laughs> oh, the plan. Um, well, I mean, anybody who watches, you'll be very well aware of my passion, which was sparked by that mm. challenge in the, in the velodrome on BBC Breakfast, is endurance sport. And I will absolutely continue to do that. I've got lots of really exciting adventures planned. I'm planning to write a book about that as well. And I'll continue with my podcast, which is all about 
the uh, mental and physical benefits mm. of sport and exercise. Which is great, by the way. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> and I'll be having lots of lions. That's what I'm most excited about well, right now. I, you know, I know it's a, it's a big decision. I know it's sort of been weighing heavily on you as well. And this will be very weird to sit on this sofa without you in the mornings oh. because... Um, and there will be, you know, millions of people at the other end of that camera who will miss you. And you, know, you told the breakfast team this morning and everybody on the breakfast team will really miss you, your enthusiasm, your passion for this job, the fact that you're so likeable but so good at the job as well. And from a, from a personal perspective, my life will be a lot poorer without you. And I, I, I genuinely mean that because you are not only a, a star, you are fantastic at your job, you're brilliant to work with, but you're also a, a great friend. And I think... Um, that, that's going to be really difficult to get up in the morning and know that you're not going to be sat there. So we wish you all the very best, Louise, but we will really, truly miss you. Can you stop now? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Dan, and thank you. As that, you know, my, you know, I have felt so supported by all of you who watched. It's been an amazing thing to be part of. Mm. Thank you, everybody. Anyway, what should we do now? Let's <laughs> crack on. Sally's <laughs> here. Good morning, Sal. Good morning. It's, it's, been, it's been very up. hard for everyone at breakfast today, isn't it, Sal? Yeah, it's been, um, it's been really, really okay. Don't like change, <laughs> um, but what I want to say is, uh, particularly over the last year, everybody at home I know knows you reading the news and bringing the news to, to them every morning. But you have looked after us all and me a lot, particularly in really tricky times. So thank you. Oh, Sal, I wish I could give you a hug. But I do, I do want to know, you know, there's a Brownlee brother missing from the Olympics. <laughs> is there something you're not saying? My foot is still mending. <laughs> I mean, I never would be anyway, but the foot is still in recovery. Am I going to be reporting no. on you in the spot? Oh, are you sure? Not in the Olympics, no. <laughs> oh, Sal. Not a never. I'm sure there'll be a race somewhere, Sal, won't there? <laughs> there will. Thanks, Sal. Um, I'm going to do, let you have a moment, gather, and I, um, I'll update everybody on this morning's sports news. Uh, we'll yeah, ready? Good. You gathered? <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Do you want to bring Carol in? Oh, Carol. Yeah. Carol. Um, morning, Carol. Um, you got the weather for us, I think. And I did tell Carol about this yesterday, so you did have a bit of warning. Morning. I did, but my gabber is still flaccid, I must say. Lou, I'm shocked, and you will be so missed, and I'm glad you're not going yet. You said not till the end of the summer. So we're going to make the most of you while we have you. Good, thank you. Thank Oh, good morning, everybody. It's sad news for us this morning. See 27, 28 on Sunday as far north as Yorkshire. I'll keep you updated on that, Lou and Dan. So, Carol, are you, um, when we're allowed to organise a party, are you, uh, are you in charge? You, you seem like a good party organiser. <laughs> <laughs> We've already discussed, haven't we, Carol? We have. We've discussed Lou and I are on a, this. A nice cold <laughs> glass of wine together. You know, oh. staying up late, that sort of thing. <laughs> I'll have to keep you up. Just the one, just the one, Lou. <laughs> what we know about our, you know, we have a, a no, no touch policy on this programme. I'm going to have to give you a hug at some stage. One. Right, did one. They, at the end, you, on your think? final day. Can I hug you on your final day? I mean, that's a, that's well, I mean, a I know weird, you, weird question, you're the yeah. non-hugger, but... I know, but I feel like I've saved one up for you, Louise, on, on the final day. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's leave it so that we've got time to, you know, we'll be hopefully when things are a little bit better, we yeah. can have a party with people. Yeah. Okay, okay let everybody. Us know, let, let us know what happens. We'll all be there. <laughs> See you later, Carol. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks. Carol. See you later. Okay. Have a lovely Tuesday. Um, so uh, he's one of the UK's most recognisable actors, uh, playing gritty characters in drama. Louise, she said you look lovely in yellow. I've done <laughs> it now, love. Thank you. Yeah, Louise, you look lovely in yellow. Thank you. I like your yellow cushion. So, you know, likewise. And also the, the fish behind you. Um, what else should we talk to you about? I mean, there's so much. You've got, you've got stuff going on in Hollywood. Um, thank you so much for talking to us. And can I say on behalf of Louise, thank you so much for those lovely things you said at the start of the interview. Because I, I don't know if you'd be able to see, but I was able to see her face when you said that. And that will mean an awful lot to her. So thank you. I'm well chuffed. <laughs> thank you so much. Absolutely great to speak to you. Good luck with all the things you've got going on. There's so much. Goodbye, Hannah. Thank you very Bye, much. Bye, Hannah. <laughs> Finally said to that. Bye, bye. <laughs> <laughs> See you, Stephen. All the best for everything. Thank you. I mean, you know, that has been one of the absolute joys, hasn't it, of the last year. He's still laughing. Wonderful. You can watch all the episodes of, Ta of Time on BBC iPlayer right now. Catch it from Sundays, 9pm on BBC One. And all those other things, Stephen, is in, oh, including the next fab. series of Peaky Blinders, Wonderful which is actor. so under the... Under the what's the raid? Not the radar. What's the thing? Under the. I have no idea what you're saying. Under the under wraps. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, then you can't talk about it. You are watching <laughs> breakfast. It's eight fifty nine.